Hello everybody, this is Christine Burke here, Forensic Genetic Genealogist, and welcome back to Unknown Humans Remain. This is case number 5, UP2638 in NAMIS. In this, we don't know if it's a male or a female, found in Michigan, February 1st, 1992, a long time ago. Unfortunately, we've got well, I guess it doesn't seem to matter. We've got some, you know, very recent and very old, but this is this is a very, very long time. Let's take a look at the case. Here we have the case in NAMIS, again, UP2638. Um, and this, they're saying they're unsure or uncertain whether the remains are male or female. And the body was found February 1st, 1992, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and they don't even have an age range. That's kind of strange. Typically, in the morgue, they have some forensic folks, um, maybe some anthropologists. Uh, sometimes they send it out. If they don't have people there, they send it out to a local college. They, they kind of try to get an idea, so that's interesting. Um, let's take a look at this. We, we don't even have a medical examiner case number. I don't know, back in 1992, maybe the Grand Rapids, Michigan area didn't have a medical examiner or case number. I, I don't know. We, we really don't have a lot of information here. Cannot estimate, unsure, uncertain race. Um, estimated year of death, 1940 to 1992. So, man, if this person died in 1940, that's that's a long time ago that's 80 plus 80 plus years all right that's um not good not good uh so this says the the circumstances uh the person is an unidentified deceased uh, again they don't know if it's male or female the body was found february 1st 1992 and the namas case was created september 18 2008 so that's again a long time and then it says um, the medical examiner coroner, the QA, I guess that's the quality assurance, was reviewed September 19, 2008, found in Grand Rapids, Michigan, 49504, looks to be the zip code in Kent County. And the details here say it's not recognizable, partial skeletal parts only. So we have absolutely, it doesn't say what skeletal parts, uh, nothing under hair color, head hair, body hair, facial hair, eye color, or anything. There is just absolutely, absolutely nothing as I look through here. When we pull up the map, it looks to be today in the middle of a neighborhood. If this is, you know, sometimes with the zip code, maybe I'm looking at Google Maps, maybe Google Maps uh, goes right into the center of that zip code, the center of that neighborhood, but it is, it looks to be uh, Northwest-ish Grand Rapids. Uh, that's a little strange. I'm going back to the case file. Partial skeletal parts only. I don't, I don't even know if it was found in someone's house or anything. We really don't know anything anything about this, but it looks like from, if I put it on where the pin on the map is, it looks to be right in the middle of a residential neighborhood or a restaurant or something. Let me see if I put it on the, yeah, in front of a house. So, I don't, I don't know. And again, we are talking about, it was, it was found in 1992. Um, Grand Rapids seems to be uh, a fairly developed city. I'm trying to get an idea. It looks to be maybe, um, I don't know, let's see if like 2,000 feet. Um, I'm trying to see the miles on uh, maybe it's a a mile and a half, a couple miles from the center of what looks to be uh, Grand Rapids. So 
I don't know if it was uh, developed at that time, and we kind of don't have anything here. Um, I mean, it's a sad situation, but it, I, I, I'm sad, sad. We don't have anything to work on at all. So we would want to find out, um, you know, what kind of skeletal parts. Uh, do we even have anything that um, from the skeletal parts we would be able to test? Uh, and uh, when you're extraction, extracting bone, um, especially old, old, old bone, which for lack of a better term, um, if there's not, uh, you know, good, oh, I hate saying this, you know, mushy parts, um, you know, I don't know what we could do with it. Uh, they might have to grind it up, you know, so this, this, this would probably be uh, one of the more expensive cases to extract the DNA. Maybe we're looking around. $2,500 to $4,000 to get this person identified. So, uh, sorry here, folks. I, I don't really have anything to tell you, but again, uh, we have nothing, absolutely nothing to go on. If this person died in, in 1940, that's a long, long time. That's a long, long time that somebody is waiting for their person. If you'd like to get involved, uh, we would appreciate you liking and subscribing on our uh, video channels. You can also join our community, the Everything Genetic Genealogy community, where uh, we are our members uh, who love doing this sort of stuff, are working and trying to come up with information on these cases. We are uh, we have a, a give, send, go. Information will be uh, down below in the uh, details. And if you can spread the word, if, if you're in the Michigan area uh, or anywhere in the world and you'd like to sponsor the funds so that we could get the genome, the DNA part taken care of, our volunteers are willing to work the genetic batching for free. Um, once again, I appreciate your time uh, and thank you so much. And, and let's try to do our best to get this person identified. Thank you.